Good morning. It is a beautiful morning here in the homestead. It's 45 degrees out. It is fall. Fall is in the air, but we have not had a frost. Our first frost date was a week and a half ago, and we still don't have one in the foreseeable future. So I am going to take it because we've had a really wet summer. We're going to be working on a, another project today. We, yeah, our goats and our sheep, they like to roam free. We let them. We were working the other day on cleaning up the sides of the roads, and I broke a lot of stuff. I broke the tractor. I broke the mower. I still need to do that, but we're going to be jumping on the barn build. We need to get that prepped and ready to start doing concrete here shortly. So, yeah. <sighs> Mowing the other day, it was one thing after another. So, unfortunately, that project didn't get finished. We still have to finish that, just not today. So we're going to be working on the workshop. I'm sure you guys know how it goes sometimes when you're doing a project and it doesn't go as planned. Yeah, that was my day the other day. But I'm loving this nice fall weather. We usually don't get this kind of weather this late in the season for us. I'm sure a lot of you Southerners, this is your kind of weather and it is amazing. So I'll have to show you the shop floor. We just finished epoxy in that. That is nice and dry now, so let's go check it out. Our new batch of coffee is going to be available October 3rd at 1 p.m. Eastern time for everybody to get on the website and get some. So when you go on the website, if you go before that time, it will show sold out. We restocked the website at 1 p.m. Eastern time, so everything's gonna say sold out until that time, and then we'll hit the refresh button and everything will call it, will be live, and you can order the coffee. We're gonna have our Modern Homestead cold brew. I don't know if everybody else likes cold brew like we do all year round. We got the campfire decaf. It's fall time, it's starting to get cool out, so to have a nice warm cup of coffee at night is always nice. And then we have our Homestead Sunrise blend. And we are still working on our dock roast. That'll be coming soon, but we're being fussy on that one. We're trying to make sure we have the right beans, the right roast. We want it to be delicious to share with you guys. We don't just want any old coffee. We want the best. And we're getting there. So getting there. We're so close. Can't wait to share that one with you guys, but the three coffees that we have right now are delicious. Let us know in the comments below if you like cold brew all year long, if it's a seasonal thing for you. I like my cold brew all the time. We're excited to get more of this coffee out to you guys. So today, October 3rd at 1 p.m. Eastern time is when we're gonna go live. We're changing up and we keep switching the times when we letting the coffee out on the website. So we're gonna try 1 p.m. this time so different people can get on there and get it ordered. I don't know how fast it's gonna be before it sells out, but at some point it will get sold out. So if you want some, get on the website at 1 p.m. Now, let's get on with the project. The shop floor is all epoxied and it looks good. How do you like the gray? Cause I, I know like you, you're not a gray person. I don't, I don't love gray. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It's one of those projects that is kind of a pain to do, but I'm so glad we have it done. Having the garage floor or any concrete floor, epoxy, I should say, just makes it so much easier for cleanup, for sweeping. Concrete is always dusty if you don't have an epoxy. We, have, we just added epoxy in at this homestead, the other places we never did, and I'm so glad we are. Makes cleanup better, and especially if you're gonna be doing any kind of harvesting of animals. If we're doing it in here, you know, blood gets anywhere, you can kind of hose it out, you don't gotta worry about staining anything, and you can clean up really easy. We did in this part of the shop a clear epoxy because the gray epoxy that we got for out there said we should only need three boxes to do just the front half and have some left over to do this back half well we used four boxes just to do the front so that was kind of, it's kind of off their calculations of how much you need so we had left over clear from the house all right so we've kind of been jumping back and forth on projects we started working on our gravel pad for the barn we're gonna be building because we could get gravel and it was raining that day so everything was pretty wet so we got everything pretty well smoothed off but we weren't able to compact it down. Then we had other projects we were trying to finish up inside the workshop so we had to jump back on that. Now that it's dry, we can get back out here on the pad and start getting this leveled off better. We'll check the grade and then we can pack it down and then we can start figuring out the forms. I don't know how far we're gonna to get today but it is a nice day to be doing outside work like this. We're jumping back and forth a lot on projects right now too because the time of the year it is, winter is here. 
So we're trying to finish up different projects so we can have inside stuff for the winter. So we're trying to get ahead of all of that. And we gotta play around with the weather also. So let's see, I gotta level this off. So winter is not here, it is just turned fall, but we know that winter is right around the corner and actually around this time, anytime from October to anything after October, we've had snow. So we just try to get ahead of it and keep working and knowing that we have projects to do and use up all the available time that we have. We do work outside and do stuff like that when it's cold, but just trying to get ahead of the projects, ahead of the weather and knowing that some of our outdoor stuff does come to a little bit of a screeching halt. So we're just trying to get ahead of everything. So there are outside projects that we do in the winter, but there's a lot of projects. If you don't start them this time of the year, you can't do them or you can't start in the middle of winter. Like we can't do, you probably could do concrete in the middle of the winter, but it would not be fun at all. So we want to get our slab all done and built before it gets too cold. And then we can stop building and framing later in the season, early winter, but we want to have all of the prep work in the concrete in so we're trying to get ahead of all those things we got a bunch of stuff inside the workshop we still need to do we got to do solar but we're just trying to bounce back and forth and take advantage of the weather so that's that height let's check it over here okay so right around there That is dead on right there. That's right on. Right there. So we're very close. I just kind of got to smooth everything out. I think I'll go grab the TYM tractor and try back dragging with the bucket of that versus the excavator. The reason why I like using the TYM in some spots or a tractor in some spots, I should say, you got your tires. So you can come up with your bucket like on this edge and back drag it. Where if I try doing that with the excavator, with the blade, if you start teeter tottering, it kind of throws you off and you can't reach in further. So it just kind of makes it easier when you're trying to do like little small stuff to finish it off with the tractor, if that makes sense. I'm really happy about two weeks ago, we put grass seed with Redmond's Grow on it down, which is like an organic fertilizer, and it feeds the soil. In the areas that didn't get completely washed out by water, it's growing really good, all up on our banks, above the bank, it's growing out good. And then some areas on the bank where it didn't get washed out terrible, over on this bank where it's not so long and steep, it's coming in really nicely. And then over that way, it's still coming in, it's just not as thick. So I'm hoping this warmer weather stays and this grass can really start taking off and get rooted up good before winter. Cause it's looking really nice. This area where we're on, this has got a lot of rain and water flowing through it so it kind of pushed off some of the seeds but I mean it's still taking root so I'm happy with that so if this can stay growing like this we should have a good head start for springtime which is awesome it's a little breezy in the tractor this morning I wonder why that would be it was a rough couple of days
see the door still works. Well, I think we'll stop there, give that a check. Gotta shut that little, door in her. Yeah, it closes a little hard. We don't want to break it. So <laughs> we'll, all you can do is laugh. So we'll give that a check, see how we are, see where we are for level wise, and then we can get it compacted and check it again. And then we gotta figure out what we're gonna need for forms. Hopefully we can use a lot of the forms that we had left over from the workshop. We should be able to, you just never know how wood reacts from being wet and having concrete on it. So now we can get that all framed up, leveled out and see how it is. It's the nice part about doing it this time of the year, it's a lot cooler. When we did the workshop concrete and forming, it was in the middle of summer and hot and sweaty. So I'm gonna appreciate this. All right, it looks pretty good looking at it, but you never know. That is right on the money, like right there's level. That's awesome. That's perfect. Maybe a little low right there, where you're Here standing. might be a little low. A, like an inch maybe. Yeah. And then, same thing there. So we can always, if the majority of it's an inch low, that can be great and we just level the forms off. Like we don't have to be this height. Like this isn't a, like a set height. I just went off of, this is roughly, this actually might even be higher than the workshop height before the cement pad. So I just picked a level that was close to what that area is for a height before the cement pad. And then we'll have six to eight inches of concrete on top of this. So it'll be at the same height as that. I wanna make sure the buildings are close to the same height. So water flowing wise, it's all coming and going that way. So we're right there. <clears throat> right there. These big rocks make a really good base, but they don't rake easy. <laughs> all right, let's get the compactor out here, compact this all, and we'll check it over again. So a while back, Al had bought an A compactor from Harbor Freight, and I thought, do you really, in my head, I don't know if I said out loud, but in my head I thought, do you really need to have that? He has used that thing so much, definitely got its use out of it. It's definitely got, you can tell it's been used a lot. He has used it like for everything, so. We've warmed it out, let other people use it, so I think it cost 350 bucks. It was one of those things, even when I bought it, I was like, mm, do I really need it? This is when we do in the harvest house and we did it for that. All the driveway, we packed down. You've done other parts of the road. You've yep. done all the different foundation areas, just so many things. Yep. It's been used and used and used. And sometimes I'm not sure if it's gonna start still, but he's <laughs> gonna use it until it doesn't work anymore. But he has definitely got, we have definitely got our money's worth out of it. For when he always tells me he needs some certain tool, I always think, do you really need that? So, well, this was one he definitely uses. And the others too, usually. All right, I gotta make sure to turn it on because I do that a lot. I try starting it without the on switch. So let's see. All right, gas is on, switch is on. Let's put it on start. Uh-oh. Shouldn't have talked about it. You did. Off on. Ooh.
You approve of the tractor, mister? I mean, I guess it is kind of beneficial not having a door. Makes it easier to put my drink in. All right, I came up here so I could get my forks because we're gonna need to move some lumber around and why not work smarter, not harder. much as I want to get these forms built, we need to run out to the feed store and get feed for the pigs, number one. And then while we're there, we'll pick up some feed for the, some alfalfa pellets for the cows. The pigs have been eating us out of house and home. We've been going through four or five bags of feed a week. Luckily, their time is coming to an end and that means we'll have some delicious bacon in the freezer. So we gotta get there, get that picked up. And then we gotta move pasture the cows are done a really good job eating down where they are. I'm gonna be doing a podcast later tonight with Ben from Holler Homestead and Jason from Solo Land. We have a podcast called Homestead Shop Talk, and I do that. We record that, and then it goes out on Friday morning. So tonight's the night I get to go chat with them and have a fun time. So we gotta make sure that pasture is all set up before I do that. I know winter will be here, and we wanna have this barn ready so we can have the cows in here this winter. We are excited to get this built. There's a couple of reasons why we're doing that this year, and it's not really per for the cows. There was a temporary barn I was gonna build for the cows, so we can have like a milking parlor and stuff, but some things have changed, and we'll share with you why we're kind of forced to do that this year, but we are, so we're gonna get that done. But it's gonna be nice. We still need to figure out the whole design and concept of how we want the layout, but we're gonna, well, you'll see when we get there, but I am excited. It's gonna be so nice to have a nice big barn area for the animals, especially for starting piglets and meat birds and all the different things. I'm excited. That's tomorrow morning's food, not today. All right, so we got all of the hay and grain last night. We got the pasture moved. I didn't record any. We got the cows out there this morning. They are loving that new pasture move that we did last night for them. This is all compacted nice. I got a phone call last night. They can bring in more gravel. We need some more gravel for over there by in front of the excavator. So that way when we're going to pour concrete, if it's a wet day, the concrete trucks can get over there without sinking. And then we've been having a wet spot over here that we want to fill in when we get a little bit of rain it's not a problem but we got like an inch and a half of rain one night and it flooded out we were able to drain it but we want to get that all filled so they're gonna be coming with gravel today we could put so a pond right here we could put a pond right there but i don't think we want a pond right by our barn we could do like a manure lagoon like everybody else does oh mm. no I'm i actually I think i hear the dump truck they were supposed to be here in about an hour and a half so they're early, which is a good thing. That means I need to jump in the TYM, get that out of the way, and we can get the first load backed in. All right, we gotta run up and fuel up the excavator. 
the fuel gauge does not work and it hasn't worked since I got it. I, I need to repair it. I don't know what I need to do, but I need to fix it at some point, but I want to fuel it up so we don't run out of fuel while we're working today. have a nice handy dandy fuel tank the only thing is it'd be nice to set it up with its own little battery pack because we have to get power from the vehicle we are fueling up which is fine but if you can't reach the battery and the fuel tank it's kind of a pain so i think let's do that I don't know how low we were on fuel, but I'm thinking we must have been down there a good amount. No, maybe not. That didn't run very long. This pumps fast, but I don't think it took more than five or 10 gallons. I think that we got that spread as much as we can. I'll hit a few little high ruts out with a rake and then we will compact it all, see how it is, and see if we think we need any more loads over there or not. I'm thinking that's probably going to be good, but I wanna get it raked out a little bit better and then compacted and then kind of give it my final answer. All right, so I just got another load dropped off over here. We're gonna keep that thick so we can keep the water out. I'm gonna spread that. And while I'm spreading that, Gina is gonna finish compact in this area. So I just gotta show her how to use the compactor. Make sure when you're holding it, don't hold on too tight. If you hold on too tight, your arms really like vibrate and then you're, you kind of get like numb feeling arms. Oh. You know what I mean? <laughs> so just kind of hold on loosely, but enough to guide it. Don't push on it, just walk behind it and guide it. That's what I found the best to work. On. On. That's good there. So that'll just run in height. 
Yeah. You can like go, it won't go anywhere. Yeah. And then. All right, so while Gina has fun doing that, I'm gonna spread this load and I'm gonna keep this load as high as I can. That way we keep the water out of here. This will be like our main driveway that we use for the barn. Cause this end of the barn is where we're gonna to wanna to have our hay storage and our feed and stuff like that. So this will be where we drive in and out of. So I'm gonna try to keep this as thick as I can and we'll keep it tapered. And we're gonna do another load right here. I don't know, maybe we'll wanna go another load over here. It's so hard to tell, but we got a low spot here. So we definitely need to bring some up here. We can do that with the next load. I don't know. It's one of those things, trying to fill everything in. This year has been an extra wet year. So it's even harder because if we just got normal rain, even what we have right now, it's fine. It's where we get the big downpours that we've been getting lately. It just floods everything. So we're building this. So in the floods, it doesn't flood, if that makes sense. We want to make sure all of our water stays running. So let's get this spread out. I should be able to get this done before the dump truck driver gets back. Hopefully Gina can get that packed before the dump, tri dump truck driver gets back. And it'd be nice to be able to get that packed too before the dump truck driver gets back. We'll find out. She's doing good. I wonder how her arms are gonna feel at the end. Cause what I've been noticing, if I hold on tight, my arms go numb, but if I stay loose, it's not bad. If you just walk with it and guide it, it doesn't bother you. But if you like fight it, the next day, your body is sore, so. How do your arms feel? I think they're all right, but I don't know if I can cook supper tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Little jello-y. I definitely wouldn't recommend it with like loose rings or anything because you probably right. won't, they'll probably get lost. Yeah. yeah. It's one of those things. It's definitely a lot of vibration going on while you're working. I don't think you really notice it so much when you're doing it, no, when okay. you stop. It's, it's not bad, but I, I always tend to hold tight on the thing. So yep. I'm glad you gave me that tip. All right, we got one more load. We should be able to spread that and take care of this low spot in the area. And then we're gonna have hopefully two more loads dropped off today. One on that other side, and then a pile of finer stuff. So when we start to build the forms, if we have any low spots, we can shim it with that. And then we can backfill the forms and get ready for concrete. All right, we got one more load to spread over here. And then we got a pile dropped off, but we'll use that later when we're forming. This, I am hoping, is enough to finish off everything out here. I think it should be. Well, let's get this pushed around, leveled off, and... All right, that's looking good. I'm gonna get the compactor going and see how much we can get compacted. It's gonna be nice to see what this looks like once it rains. It's gonna be a while before it rains and I am happy about that. So I'll get this all compacted down and see how it looks. But 
I think we're in good shape. As much as we weren't planning on doing all of that this year, it looks nice and it's going to be nice to be able to use that to pull in and out of the workshop. If you got trailers to turn around to get in and out of the barn. So I am glad we did it. We just weren't looking forward to having to get all that gravel hauled in this year, but with our weather we've been having, some things you just have to do and this is one of them. So tonight for supper, Al decided we're gonna have some smash burgers. So he's gonna help out with that. He's got his burgers ready. I'm gonna chop an onion, put some cheese, some bacon. What else? Lettuce. Ketchup, mustard, all the good things. I'll probably put some mayo on mine. All right, he just sharpened my knife too. So I gotta be careful here. Watch your fingers. I don't have a skillet for our pellet grill, so we're going to do it inside on an electric skillet. I know, it should be outside on the pellet grill, but it's what we got. We're gonna put some onions down. All right, I'm gonna season my balls first. A little bit of garlic powder. A little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. And the seasoned side is gonna go down. I think you should use a squisher ice that we use. That hot? A little warm. I usually cook up a bunch of bacon every weekend and then I can have it for breakfast and I just reheat it. So we're gonna do that tonight for the burgers. Get that warming up. I don't know if your mouth is watering, but mine is. I am very excited to eat this. It's not even done yet. And then you can put cheese on top. Yep. Fancy. Hopefully. Dear Lord, I thank you for the wonderful day. Working in a Don't forget to get on the website and get yourself some coffee before it sells out. Thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey. You guys are a huge blessing to us in our homestead. And we'll see you right back here in the next video. Bye. Bye. This pillar of marble, soft as a sunset, wings of an eagle.